hi there guys welcome back to the reaction video today we're checking out the truth about irish first um, slaves brought to america without further ado guys let's check this out there has been an ongoing debate as to whether the irish were the first slaves in the americas predating the first black African slaves by almost a decade. A decade, okay. Slavery is perhaps one of the oldest profit-making endeavors in human history, mm. and the Irish were a special target for a thousand years. Really? Throughout history, the Irish were persecuted by one faction or another to include enslavement and indentured servitude. When did the Irish indentured first become slaves? Servitude. How long did the selling of the Irish continue? Who was responsible? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author. And we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Some groups deny the Irish slavery under English and later British rule, claiming that this was nothing more and voluntary indentured servitude, mm -hmm. which did exist. However, there are counter arguments that will be challenged here. There is a legitimate dispute as to the numbers enslaved, especially during the 17th century before the Act of Union in 1707. The official British legal terminology used was indentured servants. Whether the servants in question had willingly signed the indenture contract to immigrate to the Americas or were first to go, many were forced. Huh. Therefore, those transported unwillingly and effectively sold were not considered to be indentured. This included political prisoners, vagrants, convicts, political activists, thieves, prostitutes, or people who had been defined as undesirable by the English government. Hold on. Um, I keep hearing this word in indentured servitude. This is not the first time I've heard it. Um, is it to say that people sign up to become slaves? Is it like um, uh, going to get a contract to say, okay, I'm going to work for you for, I don't know, a period of time, but then you're going to pay me and then I'm going to go back to where, you know, where I'm coming from. Because I keep using that word, indentured servitude. I'm just trying to understand why, I'm, I'm just trying to understand why people would, want to be slaves if that's the case then i guess it's understandable these people wanted to work and then they went to become slaves and they get paid for it but anyway i might be wrong let's see the irish introduction to slavery was during the first viking raids in the year 795 lasting through the mid 9th century viking. this period saw the irish killed and enslaved mm. just like many other societies the vikings attacked most of these early raids were along the northern and eastern coast using hit-and-run tactics. The Vikings would then flee with treasure and slaves and return to either their holdings in Scotland or back to Norway. Usually, many slaves who were of value were ransomed back to their families, but others remained in captivity. The rich ones. Then, from the year 837 onward, larger targets such as the greater monastic towns of Armagh, Glendalla, Kildare, Slain, Clonard, and Clonmacnoise and Lismore were hit by larger forces. These large-scale raids generally spared the smaller local churches and villages far inland, but slaves were still taken, mostly to Scotland and Iceland. In 875, Irish slaves in Iceland launched Europe's largest slave rebellion since the end of the Roman Empire, when Hulfjörlef Holmarsson's slaves killed him and fled to Vesmanyar. In 841, the port that became known as Dublin was taken and occupied by both Olaf and Ivar the Boneless, and by 853, this part of Ireland was a Norse trading center, and slaves were a large part of it. The slave trade did not stop with Ivar's death in 873. Finally, in 902, driven out of Dublin by the combined forces of Brega and Leinster, the, but the Vikings came back in 914 and reclaimed all the territory, taking more slaves, but Irish resistance was not over. In 980, the Irish, under Mail Sectional Mac Domnail, King of Meath fought and managed to defeat the Vikings and freed all of their slaves. <laughs> Some Vikings who remained assimilated and adapted to Christianity and became part of Irish society. The final nail in the coffin regarding Vikings holding land and taking slaves was in 1014 at the Battle of Clontarf, when Brian Baru, 
High King of Ireland attacked Dublin, aided by his allies, the Limerick Vikings. They fought other Irish allied to the local Vikings in Dublin, and Baru's force won, and all the slaves were again freed, thus ending the legacy of constant Norse raids, whether from Danes or Norwegians. Mm. The period forced enslavement and severity ended a century after the Norman invasion of England in October 1066. Subsequent Norman rulers of England eyed Ireland, and slavery in its true form was abolished in 1102. In 1155, Pope Adrian IV supposedly gave Henry II of England a papal bull, granting the king the authority to invade Ireland. However, many historians believe that this authorization was a forgery. Regardless, Henry II of England faced excommunication for the murder of Thomas a Becket, the Archbishop of Canterbury, so it is possible. However, Adrian's successor, Pope Alexander III, granted the lands of Ireland to Henry II, although it was not his land to give. Hmm. The Norman conquest of England and Ireland were cataclysmic events that would shape Ireland's as well as world history and create tensions with England for the next 800 years. The Normans were initially invited to Ireland by Dermot McMurrah, the deposed King of Leinster. He is sometimes referred to as Dermot of the Foreigners, and his grandmother was the granddaughter of Brian Baru. In October 1171, King Henry II landed in Ireland and allowed Dermot to recruit soldiers and mercenaries, as Ireland was made up of several kingdoms at war with each other. The city of Dublin and the surrounding area were under Norman occupation and would be called the Pale, or the Safe Zone. Going beyond that was considered foolish, hence the term we use today, going beyond the Pale. Beyond the pale. But the Normans ended the practice of slavery in Ireland, but not serfdom, for at least a few hundred years. Despite the Norman abolishment of slavery, serfdom was still alive and well. Serfs were, unlike slaves, bound to the land, and the land meant everything. So selling people into slavery would have left no one to farm and conduct agriculture. Following the Battle of Kinsale in 1601, when the Irish and Spanish alliance was defeated, the Irish aristocracy fled to Europe, but the commoners remained, and they left Hmm. a power vacuum filled by English nobles. Reports vary, and the numbers are in dispute, but the high number is that English forces had 30,000 captured Irish and Spanish soldiers. Other sources say half that number, around 15,000, were engaged, with 7,000 to 8,000 being captured. The Spanish allies were allowed to leave, but not the Irish. In 1603 or 1604, King James I of England, crowned on March 23, 1603, reportedly issued the Order of Banishment. This allowed those Irish captured to be sold a permanent banishment. After nearly a decade, the king gave permission for the English governor general to collect and sell the captured Irish soldiers as slaves and send them to the New World in the Americas. In 1612, the first recorded Irish slaves were sold, possibly to the Portuguese and taken to the Amazon River Basin in their colony in modern day Brazil. This brought them to the New World. There has been some dispute as to whether these people were indentured servants or slaves, but it is clear that they were forced out of Ireland to the New World, so it seems illogical and ridiculous to assume that they went voluntarily, hence the status of slaves. Right, okay, so that is to say that the Irish were the first slaves to go to the New World, which is America. Why is America called the New World? I guess, I guess it's called the New World because it's out of England. The Irish were like the first people, the first slaves that were brought to America, not the black people. I don't know, but everything I've read or seen has just insinuated that, you know, the blacks were like the only, the first and maybe the only slaves that were in, in America. And any other race that came, came into America as you know, in Detroit servitude, like they went willingly and they signed, I guess, signed contracts. I've always believed, I mean, before I started, you know, before I started checking out videos like this here on YouTube, I've always believed that, I've always thought that, you know, the blacks were the only and first, for the only slaves brought to America. Also forced to, you know, nothing like, it was nothing like an indentured servitude for the blacks. But anyway, let's skip going. It has been chronicled that in 1625, James I's son, Charles I, issued the decree. And it may be possible before his death in March 1625, 
But given the timeline of James's death, it would appear that his son, Charles, probably did issue the World Decree authorizing the Irish slaves. This included prisoners captured, those deemed to be common criminals, and rabble-rousers who were sold. They were to become the property of the English plantation owners in the North American colonies. As a result, tens of thousands of Irish men and women were sent to the Eastern American colonies, as well as Guyana, Antigua, and Montserrat. As well, between 1629 and 1632, as other Caribbean locations over the next few decades were infiltrated, but the exact number may never be known. By 1637, approximately 69% of the population of Montserrat were Irish. Many were indentured servants, yet some were slaves. The rationale was simple. Black slaves had to be purchased at a cost of around 20 to 50 pounds sterling, a huge sum of money in those days. However, Irish slaves were sold for 900 pounds of cotton per person. But Wait, what? <laughs> oh, they sold black slaves for that cheap. Whoa, whoa, look at 50, 20 to 50 pounds and then like 900, like, whoa, why, 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 why were they so, why were they so that cheap? Why were they so that cheap? And why were these people, why were the Irish so that expensive? Okay, maybe we can find out. Also traded for tobacco and indigo in a straight barter system. It would appear that the Irish then became the largest source of slaves for English slave traders and plantation owners at that time far surpassing the African slave trade until the early to mid 1700s. Between 1641 during the Irish Rebellion to 1652, it has been stated that over 550,000 Irish were killed by English forces and 300,000 more were sold as slaves, mostly military aged men. Their children, especially women and girls, were sold and considered quite valuable in the domestic service roles. The greatest perpetrator of this was Oliver oh. Cromwell, who defeated Charles I in 1649 during the English Civil War and had him executed. Cromwell, oh. as Lord Protector, waged a ruthless war against the Irish, starting in 1649. By 1650, it is claimed that nearly 29,000 Irish were sold to planters in St. Kitt. During the decade of the 1650s, it is also claimed, as well as disputed, that around 100,000 Irish children, generally from 10 to 14 years of age, were taken from their parents and were also sold, and sold themselves also as slaves or indentured servants in the West Indies, Virginia, the Carolinas, and New England. It is also claimed that between 1651 and 1660, the Irish slaves far outnumbered the colonists in all areas. In 1652, Cromwell wow, ordered that 12,000 Irish were to be sold to Barbados. And those numbers are not in dispute only their status. On 1 May 1654, his To Hell or To Connacht proclamation was issued during the Act of Settlement of 1662. This was when the English began confiscating all Irish-held lands, and the native Irish were relocated west of the Shannon River. Those who resisted were sent to the West Indies as slaves or executed. His own words proclaimed, quote, those who failed to transplant themselves into Connacht or County Clare within six months shall be attained of high treason, or to be sent to imagine? America, or other parts beyond the seas. Those banished who return ought to suffer the pains of death as felons by virtue of this act without benefit of clergy." End quote. The English could kill the Irish without penalty, but selling them offered great profit. It is claimed that over 80,000 more Irish were sold, with 52,000 going to the colonies of Barbados and Virginia. Oh my God. But again, we cannot verify the exact numbers. Many argue that these were indentured servants, not slaves. Yet there are no records of contracts between those forcibly removed and their benefactors. One may assume that, given the barter system of using tobacco and cotton as a trade item for workers, that these deported Irish were, in fact, slaves. In 1656, the Council of State ordered the roundup of 1,000 Irish girls and 1,000 Irish boys in their early teens, even some children to be rounded up and sold to Jamaican planters. These numbers are in dispute, Even in but Jamaica. do seem reasonable, as these would be children whose parents were already deported. Part of this order was an edict passed on October 2nd, 1665, which stated, quote, Upon report of Committee for America concerning proposals for transporting persons from Long Island to Jamaica to confer with the Committee for Jamaica, end quote. The persons were Irish, 
and no indentured servant would be released to go to Jamaica. These had to be forcibly exported Irish, who were already present in New, New York. York. Huh. In fact, some of the English receiving these Irish slaves seemed rather concerned, hence this following report. Quote, Commission appointing Cornelius Holland, Colonel Owen Rowe, Sir Thomas Roth, and 14 others a company by the name of the governor and company of the city of London for the plantation of the Somers Islands to take into consideration the present condition of those plantations, many well-affected persons there having been much oppressed and unjustly dealt with in relation to matters of conscience." End quote. Whitehall, 1653, June 28th. This situation, with the forcibly removed Irish not being a people to take subjugation lightly, appeared to have created the fear of an uprising, and this seems to be explained in the Whitehall document from November 18, 1656. Quote, the Council of State to Captain Wilkinson, importance of the Summers Islands to the interest of the Commonwealth, supposition that the Spaniards will endeavor to get a footing there, Doubtful that a principle of disaffection may yet be retained by some of the inhabitants. He is encouraged to attend to his duties as commander of the fort, to keep a vigilant eye upon the malignant and discontented party, that they may have the less opportunity to prejudice the island's safety, and to use his best endeavors to secure the interest of the commonwealth." End quote. This referred to the Irish population that must have been slaves and they feared an uprising. No reason so. to worry about indentured servants. So, whether one accepts the reality of Irish slavery or not, the fact remains that there were Irish people forced into slavery. However, the exact numbers may never be known. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free. And please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas. And we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you. Oh boy, wow, this is, this is, this is some eye-opening video. I was just about to say the S word, but my goodness, wow, I had no idea about that. I didn't even know about, I didn't even know about that. I didn't even know there was anything called an indentured servitude. I didn't know that. I. Wonder if there was anything like that available for the white, for the black slaves. I, I don't think so because they're all captured and sold off. No, there was no time to, you know, sign any contract. I had no idea about the Irish slave trade. There's really a thing like this: the Irish being slaves, their ancestors being sold, kids taken from their parents and sent to Jamaica, women sold off, like just separating families and for their selfish benefit or selfish reasons why is, why do people not talk about this anymore that's the, that's the question i have i mean the irish people why do they never come out just you know how m most black people don't miss the opportunity to throw it in your face that their ancestors were slaves so for that reason they probably want to be treated better or something 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 why is that never i've never heard anything about that i've never heard anything like that so it's you know the irish slave and I, they seem to have had like a really pretty rough um history as well i mean it's just horrible it's just it's just horrible what power does to people you capture this group of people and then you start separating them and taking kids from their parents and selling them off for your selfish benefits how do they even sleep at night by doing stuff like this? I can't say how did because these things are still happening till date. These things are still happening till date, even in my country. Promising people of a better life, I got a job for you, and then you go over there and all of a sudden, sex trafficking, stealing kids from their parents. I mean, these things are still happening till date, and it's horrible. It doesn't matter the color, the speed color they have on their skin. fact is it's wrong and it's horrible 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 but it should have to go through this as a lot of people would say this things happened in the past leave it let it be in the past yeah i mean yes this did happen in the past and it's still happening and it's good to bring them bring them to light so we can learn from it thinking about this this whole endangered servitude thing here 
So you go and sign a contract with a slave owner and say, hey, I want to be your slave. The first question I have is, do they pay? Do they pay you to work for them? And if this slave owner gets a better offer, like, I want to buy this slave of yours who, I don't know, signed a contract with you. Don't they get greedy and then say, hey, okay, well, here, take this person and give me the money. Do they give to their words even? That's something that just popped into my head. But really, this is, <sighs> this is wow. This is really crazy. Thank you guys for bringing this one to light again. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, do not hesitate to give me a big fat thumbs up. Consider hitting that subscribe button as well. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Until then, stay safe, be kind, and bye.